bold fabric colors, fusible web, release paper, creative cutting. These are the elements of fusible fabric collages, art quilts that have character. For this two-part series, I've welcomed my friends and guests, Laura Wazolowski and Frida Anderson, international quilt artists who share technique yet have their own style. Frida, your artwork is inspired by nature. Yes, Nancy. Every day I walk with my little dog and I'm inspired by the woods and the rolling fields around my neighborhood. Now, Laura, you take a little different approach. Same colors, same technique. I usually am inspired by the fabric scraps that I have and the colors, the wonderful colors I have. So I improvise and make up my designs as I go along. Laura and Frida will share with us a workshop approach to this expressive technique, Art Quilt's Fusible Collage Workshop. That's what's coming up next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads, because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture custom built in America. Clover, Makers of sewing, knitting, quilting, and embroidery products for over 25 years. Experience the Clover difference. Amazing designs and Class A needles. During this episode, or these two episodes on art quilts, we'll be sharing with you small little quilts that Frida and Laura have created and that you can create too. And the first thing we're going to look at is the fabric. And since this is a fusible collage technique, the type of fusibles and how to fuse them. Right. So the first thing we want to choose is our fabrics. And I like to use the hand dyed fabrics or the batiks because the color goes all the way through them. But if you can use other 100% nicely woven cotton fabrics as well, just make sure you wash them first. Fun colors. I mean, that's what I love about your bright work. colors. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Keeps us happy. And then this is fusible technique. So we're going to talk about this. And this is the key of it. It is. And so I use a fusible that has a paper backing on it. And when I apply the fusible, I apply it to the whole piece of fabric. I want to make sure that my fusible stays inside the shape of my fabric. And I want to use a hot, dry iron, no steam when you're applying the fusible. When you apply the fusible, it heats up and you want to let it cool down. And I'm going to work without the paper on the fabric. So I'm going to cut out I'm going to peel the, fuse, the paper off and then um, cut out my shapes. One thing to avoid mm -hmm. is to make sure you don't overfuse. And, and I have done that yes, a lot. And it's, what happens is it turns glassy. And you can see that as opposed to opaque. Mm -hmm. And no steam. No steam. <laughs> We're going to use steam later, but not when you're applying the fusible to the fabric. So after it's dried, then you're going to remove the paper and Correct. save it. And save it, because we're going to design on it, and we're going to refuse to it. So you just you just peel, peel the it edge back, and it mm -hmm. should peel very nicely right off, just like that. So the, the, next, first, the first collage technique we're right. going to feature is this cute little Midwestern landscape. And you're going to learn in the workshop how to draw this out, 8.5 by 11, which you have done. Right. And I'm going to show you a technique of creating the stripey units in the fields. So the first thing that I did was I uh, took my fabrics and I cut them on the bias, pretty different colors so I could get different colors in my fields. And then I have cut them up about a half inch wide and I traced around the shapes of my fields on my release paper. Yeah, tra you can trace some pencil or let's say a, a, a marker, permanent marker. Or even can... colored pencil will work. And you've separated them. I have so that I can fuse right on the paper. And I am going to do my fusing uh, technique where you slightly overlap your edges. So I have just lovingly tapped my <laughs> fabric onto my release paper and it will stick right there. And I'm going to move this from the cutting board and then just... And then slightly overlap yeah. my edges when I fuse them together so oh. that the oh. top one sticks to the one underneath. Okay. And that is a stripey fusing and technique. I, yeah, fast. Yeah, and right on, fast. Right on this paper. Right. And let me just do one more just sure. for for fun because... And I want to alternate the color so yeah. I get that depth um, 
of... Depth of field. Right, exactly. <laughs> and I want to use different colors for different parts of the fields. And here you can see that I have all five of those done out in different colors. Mm -hmm. And Lovely. one of the advantages of this technique is because I fused right on top of my drawing, that drawing is going to transfer to the back of my fused fabric. So when I go to cut it out, I have a line to follow. Very clever. Yes. Very clever. And it's not a mere image. It's the exact design that you've drawn. So that's the best part about it. One of the things I want to keep in mind is that I give myself a little bit of extra so that when I assemble them together, that the shapes will slightly overlap one on top of the other. Now, now to know how to, they're going to assemble, you just put your release paper right over on top your of pattern. the pattern. And then I can reassemble that mm -hmm. back together. So I created the sky and the fields both with stripey units. And look at the great dimensions. So what a great, great technique for the first one. Right. And then I have another idea. Um, you can also, of course, use solid shape. So if I didn't want to use the stripey unit, it would look like that out of solid colors. Easy, to, easy enough, just easy. overlapping the right. collage pieces. But then to the collage pieces, you can also add some additional Elements on top mm -hmm. of that. So to create the fields in this little quilt called Sister Quilts, I did a stripey <laughs> unit for the sky, but I started with solid colors of green. And the first thing I did was to trace the shapes of the fields onto my release paper again. I can use this paper either side works fine. And separating the elements out. So I and, can work right there. And I like what you've done here. You've predetermined your little overlap. Right. I decide if I'm going to do it top or bottom and I try to be consistent mm -hmm. on all three of them. So here are my three basic green shapes and then I have taken a lighter color green and cut on the bias using a decorative blade and because I cut on the bias it lets me curve it very nicely. When I am using these decorative blades I want to turn my mat over to the back mm -hmm. side because they will scar your mat and I have just cut them on an angle and I use force when I cut <laughs> because they are an undulating blade and uh -huh. there I have a nice little uh, decorative piece and sure. I built that collage together and here's what it would look like on top of my release paper. And all these elements, you'll get these pattern pieces in the workbook or you can design your own just very simply to practice this. But the color and the design of the collages is so attractive and what a great way. Fun and easy. Fun and easy to create a fabric collage. Let's look one more quick time. You can also see just little itty bitty pieces of the leaves. That I've cut apart from the decorative strips. So a great way of using that decorative blade and fun fabrics. Laura is going to continue our workshop on fusible collage quilts, but taking, as you said, a more improvisational approach. This little daisy basket features a lot of collage techniques. It does. If you look closely, you'll see there's a large collage in the background. Mm -hmm. The tablecloth is a pattern collage. The basket is a woven collage. And even this little braid here is a collage. A collage, you take it and you build it on release paper beforehand and then cut it into the shape that you want. Now, you're not starting with a pattern. No, I improvise as I go along. <laughs> That's okay. Just showing the two techniques and uh -huh. great gradated fabrics. Oh yeah, you want to start with beautiful fabric. So if I'm building this large collage for the background, mm -hmm. what I'll do is kind of rough cut shapes like that and mm -hmm. I want to overlap them on release paper. Now just as a refresher, these have been fused just like we yeah. detailed earlier. All the fabric I work with is fused. I'm building on release paper. I can remove it then later on if I want. Mm -hmm. So when I build a collage, I make sure that I always put the darker value on top of the lighter value. I'm just overlapping them, maybe a quarter of an inch like that. And I'll slip my fabrics on top of each other, slide them under like that to build my background collage. And then I'm going to add about five seconds of heat. That's all it takes to build that little collage. When it cools down, then I can peel it off and I'll have a collage that looks something like this. That's the background for the quilt. Instant, and, and what fun. Uh-huh. But you can build other kinds of collages, and this is a pattern collage. When I'm building pattern collages, a lot of time what I'm working with are free cut shapes. But I'll start with a large background fabric, then I'll take my sharp little scissors, mm -hmm. and I'm going to free cut shapes that I can drop down onto that background fabric. Again, I'm working right on top of the release paper. 
I pre-cut shapes. Like maybe I'd line them up or, or sure. zigzag, <laughs> random. I can stack shapes like that. I can make pattern collages just like that. And you have some batiks, some hand-dyed fabrics. You've inter right. mixed them, and this little design just shows kind of a study in right. pattern collages. What fun and yeah. bias cut. I, I like it. You get to play with all that pattern and, and color. And color, yes. So here's my pattern collage that I actually made for the tablecloth. It's a set of stripes and little squares, and these are actually cut on the bias, and that's important. And we're going to discuss that because this is kind of raw edge applique. Yes. In you see the edges. You want nice, mm -hmm. clean cuts whenever you're doing a fused fabric. So if you cut on the bias, if you look at this here, what I have is a square of fabric, and a bias cut, of course, is on mm -hmm. the 45 degree angle of right. that grain of the fabric. So this edge right here, all along there's bias. So I can cut out stems from my flowers, I can cut out leaves from my plants, little tiny, tiny um, bias strips like that, and they don't fray, and they curve as well. So. so Laura was able to curve the portion of the greenery because it was bias cut in this area. And you can see the variety of little strips. And then we have some basket weaving. Yes, and mm -hmm. this is another thing you can do with those bias cut strips. Here I have a set of vertical or warp strips, if you want to call it. I've just tacked them down on the release paper again, and I'm going to weave with them. So I pick up every other one. And my weft strips, the strips that go across, are also cut on the bias. Then I don't have to worry about fraying at mm -hmm. all. There's my weft. I'll drop it in like this, and as I go, I fuse it down. But first, let me take my little tweezers. These are really handy, and I can kind of scoot it down, tuck it in there. And all I need now is about five seconds of heat, Nancy. There you go. One, two. We'll yeah. count fast. Yeah, just to tack <laughs> it into place. You don't want to expose the glue to too much heat for too long because sure. it can kill the glue. And then what I end up with is a collage that looks like that. There's my woven collage. And you'll see that the basket from the daisy art quilt was cut from this design. That's right. So you build a collage first, then you cut the shape. And there are more elements of the yeah. collage in this design. There's one more idea that you could try. Remember those skinny little pieces mm -hmm. of bias fused fabric I cut? Here you can try braiding. Now braiding is just like braiding your hair. You're going to go over and under, and you fuse as you go. So I would tack it with the iron. I'll let you do that okay. part. Okay. So I'm going to continue yeah. to braid uh -huh. all the way down and make a braided collage. Another option, of course, is to add all sorts of little strips and to braid that way or plate that way. You have to have an odd number of strips. You weave it across like that. Fun. Mm -hmm. Now, we want to repeat the technique of transferring the pattern because it's, it's really unique to fusible collages. It really is. This is uh -huh. a really great way to get an image or an exact shape that you want on your fused fabric. Mm -hmm. And it only works with fused fabric. So you have to start out with a pattern that you want to transfer. And your glue has to be all over the fabric. There's the glue. Uh -huh. And what I do is I'll take a, a black marker and I'll trace that shape right onto release paper. It has to be release paper because you want it to release. It has the silicone coating which That's allows right. it to happen. That's right. So I trace my design mm -hmm. and what's really neat about this is what you see is what you get. So I'm going to take my design and I've traced it and I go to my fused fabric. That's the glue side. Right. I put ink to glue. So ink to glue. Five seconds. Five seconds of heat. And I have one here. And let it dry. You always cool. have to let it cool, cool down. Cool, not dry. Always let it cool down. And once it cools, what happens is as you remove it like that, do you see how the glue has picked up the ink? And sometimes you can press this again. Yeah, you can use uh -huh. this multiple times on lighter value fabrics, that same tracing. So Laura has shared with us many techniques of working with a collage from the background, weaving, braiding, using bias strips. Mm -hmm. And you'll find many ways in your creative art quilts of how to incorporate those into your designs. It's now Free's turn to share with us some freeform collage designs to add to her creations. Right, so let's review a little bit about adding the little leaves here. I've taken a decorative cut and I just have cut that apart with my scissors to create my little leaf shapes and then I can fuse those right. How easy is that? Uh, and pretty you easy. can use those for seeds as well. They don't have to be leaves. I like to start out with a variety of color of greens to create my different uh, tree 
compositions. One of the other techniques that I use is to use my decorative blades and I get three different designs here. I have cut with my decorative get blade again on mm -hmm. the bias and made it a little fatter at one end and a little thinner at the other and then I have assembled it with the bows going down and the bows going up because you know <laughs> they could go both ways. They can. Another way is to just cut a triangular shape and I can slice that apart or I can leave it whole. I can cut individual leaf shapes with my um, decorative blades. And if, as we look at this, free to trace the shape of the sky on the release paper so that you could get the right proportion So I would have design. some mm -hmm. from scale to work against. Then another way that I also create uh, leaf shape, uh, tree shapes is to actually use that fused stripy collage mm -hmm. again to create these shapes and I just slightly overlap them on my release paper. Here's a larger one and a smaller one. I love the little tiny yeah, one. Yeah, cute. It, it, they're really very and artistic. Then finally, the last way is to uh, take and draw out a design like we showed before and mm -hmm. using the release paper and trace that, um, transfer that to the back of fused fabrics. One of the things you want to keep in mind when you're using that technique, if your paper isn't as large as your fused fabric, I then put another piece of release paper on top so that when I press this, sure. it um, doesn't let my iron touch the fused fabrics and then I will peel that up and then you can peel up the, sure. there's your little design again. And it again. transfers whether you use a pen or pencil, anything. Yeah. And really too, because you're using fused fabrics, you don't have to worry about the straight up grain. So notice this is sure. on an angle because that's where the color is I wanted to use. You know, most of the time we throw away this release paper after using the paperback fusible web, but what many great ways yes. of using to it. To reuse it. And yes. design and. And you can use it over and over again, both sides of it until it's just used up. So whether you're starting with a pattern and you want to add a pine tree, a palm tree, whatever type, you can use it with the collage technique and this freeform design idea. When designing fusible collages, art quilts, you're going to have, Laura, a host of things left over, a host of fabrics, and these are some of your creations. Yes, I love working with these um, leftover pieces of fabric. These are all kind of randomly designed uh, with the leftovers. And what triggered this design, I remember, is I had this little piece of fabric like that, and that triggered the rest of the design. And great combination of colors, but you called yourself the frugal fuser. That's right. <laughs> I don't throw away any of my scraps. And here you can see some of the scraps that I've kept from other projects. Mm -hmm. They all have glue on them. You want to save them. And um, because they have glue on them, I can start composing on a background fabric like this. So I would look through my scraps and something would inspire me. It would trigger, maybe it's the roof of a house or in this case, to me, this looks like a hill. Sure. So I'll put it down and right away I know I'm making a landscape and I think about what's on top of that hill. A tree's on top of the hill. So I go sure. and pick out another color, something that'll contrast well, and maybe I'll free cut my tree trunk like this, a little curve maybe like that. That would go on top of the hill. And what's on top of a tree? Mm -hmm. You need some treetops. So sure. again, you're going in and you're free cutting. I like using really sharp scissors because these are raw edge quilts. They don't get finished at all. And I end up making a really tiny tree top like that. <laughs> but you never know. There's you a, big, a bigger one. There's a big one. Oh, that <laughs> looks good together. Just yeah. like that. Isn't this fun? You yeah. make it up as you go along, just like that. And maybe I'll end up with something that looks something like this. So these are all improvised, made up as you go along. Now, you have added a little extra grass so you could look right. through here and oh, Ooh, my. maybe this yeah. is a fence. I could take oh, this. Oh, yeah, let's try that. There's a neat little fence going on if I And you yeah. cannot be afraid of cutting into your fabrics. You have to cut into them because it's plain. It's a lot of it is just about playing with the fabric and, and auditioning. The color. Exactly. You know, you could take before you fuse it, you could take something off and and if it doesn't work, um, you know, you save it for something later on because it never goes bad. Once the glue is on there, you can use it forever. I've seen your design studio, and you, your scraps are a little bit more They're extensive. They're all over the place. They're more extensive <laughs> than this. Yes. 
In this first episode of our art quilts, Frida mm -hmm. and Laura have shared with us the basic designing techniques and we've done it from the basic collage technique to working with scraps from whole fabric to using the leftovers. And as you look at Laura's designs, you'll see some machine quilting, you'll also see some different hand stitching. Well, in our second episode of the series, we'll be taking the workshop approach, going through the processes of putting borders on, and whether they're freeform, as you see here, or more designed or more exacting, and then showing you some of the sewing and stitching techniques to complete your projects. It's a workshop approach that's easy to do. Are you looking for a new way to express your sewing creativity? How about the theater? Community, children's, and high school theater productions are frequently looking for creative spirits with talent. With me today is Stephanie Lindstrom, a designer, pattern maker, sewing instructor with more than 20 years of experience in Hollywood with film, TV, and theater. And Stephanie, you're going to share your ideas on when sewing, how to create it differently than if we're sewing for ourselves. Right. There's a big difference between sewing uh, regular standard street garments that mm -hmm. you would wear every day and uh, costumes. And the first thing you notice is um, at first glance, uh, the pattern seems to be very exaggerated. But mm -hmm. what you have to realize is that when you're under the lights, everything kind of washes out and also you're at a great distance. Sure. So one thing you, we have to do is make, make sure that we're choosing fabrics that don't wash out under the, under the lighting and, and th at the distance. So you're going to find things that have a lot of texture in them so that that translates once you get it on stage. And you, you have a great hint of how you choose fabric. Right. When I'm in a fabric store and I'm looking for something, I actually have to kind of blur my eyes a little bit sure. to make sure that um, when it's at a distance... Step back. Yeah, step back. Sometimes I actually drape it on a rack and I, stand, I go to the other side of the uh -huh. store and then squint and make sure because um, sometimes you fall in love with the print of something and then you get it on stage and it completely washes out. Could so. become a solid. Yes, ex exactly. And the texture that you have chosen for this great outfit. This is in a production. Yes, this was in a, the University of Wisconsin production of Imaginary Invalid last year and it was designed by a wonderful graduate student here, Bur uh, Rachel Burnett. And um, she did a wonderful job at choosing the fabrics and, and creating a really dramatic effect. Now when you look inside of these garments, I wish you could feel them because they're heavy. <laughs> they're really... <laughs> right. The, uh, the big difference in, in garment construction for theater is that you have to think about this being durable enough to uh -huh. wear for um, seven or eight shows a week and to be laundered a few times a week. Or, and also these things go into the stock for the various mm -hmm. um, companies and they're going to use them for decades so that you want it to be very durable. A lot of things have a, a very big interlining mm -hmm. and then you, they sure. have ample seam allowances so that um, you can alter it again for another person later. Now this interlining is the heavy parts and, yes. and I'm sure your stitch length is not long. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> no it, and everything is very, very durable. In fact, some of the examples I, I saw when I was looking for these, they actually um, look like a historical garment mm -hmm. um, on the outside but they have parka zippers inside for quick changes. So oh, sure. it looks very different. We have another period costume that you're seeing now displayed and mm -hmm. it has many layers and it must weigh 15 pounds. Yes, absolutely. The dry cleaning is uh, <laughs> can, can get very expensive on these things. It takes a lot of um, specialty uh, care. We use a lot of uh, things like um, uh, dress shields inside sure. to uh, protect from perspiration so they and on the inside of this dress, or the bodice area, mm -hmm. it's, it's wired, or it's <laughs> yes, firm. Yes, they use boning, and um, all of those layers are overlocked together and then, then opened up. But you have ample seam allowances and not a whole lot of clipping on the inside mm -hmm. like you would in a oh, normal sure. garment, because you want to make sure that you can um, alter it for another person later on. 
and that'll that'll last for decades in the storage. And the fabric that is in this garment is almost uh, like you use for home decorating. Absolutely, that's one of the really cool tricks that we learn is is um, because of you're able to use bigger pattern mm -hmm. in this sort of production. Um, sometimes you go to the home decorating uh, section and um, end up with, uh, especially for period garments, you can sure. you can get this type of thing at um, your Joann's or or. You know, various a, a, a variety of stores. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, Stephanie, this is encouraging to find out ways that we can use sewing in other parts of our lives and share with our community. Thank you for being with us. Thank you so much. And if you would like to have more information on Stephanie's information, and if you'd like to know more about how you can become involved in sewing for the community theater, you can go to nancyzeman.com. And on this site, you'll find all the information you'll need on Sewing with Nancy, Nancy's Corner, and you can also watch episodes of past Sewing with Nancy programs. Next time, we'll be back with our second program of art quilts, the fusible collage techniques with Laura and Frida. Until then, thank you for joining me, and bye for now. Nancy, Frida, and Laura's fully illustrated art quilts fusible collage workshop workbook includes laminated instructions for all the techniques featured in this two-part series. It's $19.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2504. Order item number BK2504, art quilts, fusible collage workshop, credit card orders only. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyzeman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs, and Class A Needles. Closed captioning funding provided by Rowenta. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.